Hey, thanks for joining me for a little impromptu rundown of the all new Jackson series, American Virtuoso. This is the first Jackson that I've ever owned. And while I've maybe strummed one here or there for a second or two over the years, I've never really spent any quality time with one. And so this is honestly the very first time. I hope you guys checked out my song demonstration playthrough from uh, a few days ago where I uh, showed you how the thing looked and sounded, which was badass, of course. Uh, but I actually shot, or am shooting, this video first because I wanted to get the guitar all set up to make that playthrough video. And so uh, that's gonna require just getting um, the strings that I prefer on there, getting it tuned to drop C, which it already is in, but uh, it's got a slightly different gauge than I like on there right now. The float is perfect. So after we change the strings and the gauge changes a tiny bit, we'll have to adjust that float a little bit. So I thought I'd just talk you through some of the specs of the guitar and then take you through that setup a little bit, talk a little bit about there, and we'll just learn about all its features. And then uh, finally, you know, give it a strum here and just see what happens in a live environment. So if that sounds good. We're just gonna do a little like, kind of just a chill walk through here. So first, let's get some relaxing music going. That'll work. Let's get into it. So again, this is the Jackson American Series Virtuoso. Comes in four different colors. I chose this satin black here. Uh, along with it came a typical little bag of goodies that a new guitar usually comes with. Some paperwork. Yeah, manual and stuff. Don't need that right now, but the whammy bar we're gonna need. Ooh, it looks like one of those push ones. Let's see how that works. Oh. Hmm. Pretty tight right off the bat. We'll see how many springs are in there in a moment. Comes with some strap locks, so that's cool. Bunch of different tools for adjusting different things. And I did notice on the back that has one of these little gimmicks that I've actually never checked out, but one of those things here that can hold some uh, some of your tools to get the job done. I like this kind of like brushed graphite look there that they got on these back plates. Really cool. We'll get into that there. I like the uh, kind of I don't know, again, is that a brushed chrome or something? Floyd parts here in this Floyd Rose 1500 series. Wasn't really sure what the difference was between the original, the 1000 and the 1500, but if you go to floydrose.com, you can get an accurate description of that. But supposedly it's just kind of some different parts and um, I don't think it'll be any lesser or greater than, than uh, the original Floyd. But I suppose that remains to be seen as we start jamming it. Uh, but just some, uh, some of the basics here, alder body which I like. It's got a bolt-on, five-piece, they call it multi-laminated caramelized maple neck uh, with graphite reinforcement rods. That was a mouthful, huh? So uh, pretty cool. These lines in here. I can actually feel those. But they call this a speed neck profile with hand rubbed satin urethane finish that does feel super nice and it feels nice and thin in my hand i like that i like this white binding along here that's really cool 12 to 16 compound radius streaked ebony fretboard with rolled edges i guess uh yeah, the edge kind of rolls off there a little bit huh Kind of cool, 24 jumbo frets and offset mother of pearl dot inlays. I'm so used to seeing Jackson's with the shark fins, you know. Um, I was kind of surprised to see the dots, but cool. Uh, it's also got those Luminlay side markers, which I think is an awesome new feature so many guitars are coming with now, so you can see what frets those are in the dark as you're playing. So really cool there. Heel mount truss rod adjustment wheel, which I'm a big fan of, so you don't have to mess around up in there. So that's pretty cool. Seymour Duncan JBTM TB4 bridge pickup. I have a, uh, a JB 
in uh, my uh, one of my ESP GL56s that um, I really like. I've just popped that in for fun. So I'm excited to hear what that's gonna sound like. And in the neck position, we have a Duncan 59 SH1N, five-way blade, single volume and tones. I mentioned the Floyd Rose. Uh, I kind of think that's it. Oh, we got the Goto locking tuners there. Those look really nice. It's gonna be my first time checking these out. Really nice neck and headstock there. Cool shape. So, so yeah, I like the profile of all this. It's, it's clean, seems like it's gonna be comfortable. Just this whole thing in there. Honestly, I don't really know what the big differences are between bolt-on and neck through. Obviously they say that a neck through or set neck has greater sustain, but while I don't have a ton of experience with bolt-ons, I've never really noticed much of a difference. So um, personally, I really have no preference on that, but uh, that looks pretty cool. And uh, most of my guitars that I own are all neck through. So yeah, it's good to have, have a couple bolt-ons, you know? So I'm gonna get started with the string change here. I know we have lots of Jackson enthusiasts here in the community, which is cool. A little something for everybody, right? I've always liked the look of Jackson's, as well as Ibanez, ESP, obviously those are all my brands of choice and I was fortunate to fall into the ESP thing many, many years ago, but uh, like I said, I've always loved Jackson. As a matter of fact, good buddy from Strongsville, Ohio, around the Camira camp early on, a guy named John Hall helped Matt and I design all of our, our custom ESPs as well as our, our signature series. Um, and coincidentally, he was a huge Jackson guy. I can't remember exactly, but I think he said at one point that he had um, 75 Jacksons. Uh, mostly like uh, soloists, I think. Um, he had some cool like Iron Maiden ones I remember seeing. So he was a huge Jackson enthusiast. And so there was definitely um, some Jackson influence going into helping uh, Matt and I design those guitars way back when. So I'm gonna be popping on my gauges of choice here, which are 11 through 52, 11, 13, 20 wound, 30, 42, and 52. And uh, so from what I've been hearing, this set is getting harder and harder to come by. That 20 wound is just something I prefer. I think a, a wound G string is just faster where, I mean, at the end of the day, I could play a plane no problem or whatever, but I just prefer that uh, that wound G string, and that's that's kind of hard to find. I know there's a lot of guys that are trying to get the same set as me um, are having trouble putting finding a set with those exact gauges. So even when I asked Jackson to set it up like that, they got as close as they could. Um, and but I figure to give this thing the ultimate test, I might as well set it up exactly how I want it, right? Why settle for anything less? There's nothing like a brand new Floyd. Just all the, the mechanics and uh, everything is just so smooth and clean. There's no like, you know, that, that breaking the lock feel, you know, when you try to um, loosen one of those saddle screws. So it's nice and smooth, and I like that. These Goto, is that I say? Goto tuners, locking tuners feeling nice. We're in business. Yeah, so 
here's the G string and I could just tell that it feels just kind of like bulky and almost square to me. Obviously it's super round, but it's like when I'm picking across it, it just isn't as fast as the wound. So again, like I said, I know they're hard to find, but give it a try, you know, see if, uh, see what you think. Yeah, where here's my G and hear that? You can hear the whines. Something about it I like. A fine wind. I believe in really stretching out the strings throughout the string changing process rather than waiting till the end, getting all your strings on there and then trying to tune up and play, especially with a Floyd. Uh, because just getting it stretched now, I just feel makes it playable so much more quickly because you're not messing around, stretching out the strings through tuning or while you're tuning and playing it and stuff like that, constantly having to retune. So just the more stretching you do during the restringing process, the better it will stay in tune when you're ready to actually pick up and play. That's a road tested trick of the trade. Seems obvious, right? A lot of stretching haters out there though. I see it in the comments, guys. I see them. Also, another big reason that stretching is important if you're gonna be doing Floyd adjustments, because if you start adjusting your Floyd immediately after uh, changing strings, they're just gonna stretch throughout that process and your float will adjust to that slightly. So the more you have it stretched out, the more perfectly in tune it's gonna be, the easier your job you'll have floating your fluid. Of course, I got two really in-depth Floyd Rose videos here on the channel, how to get that perfect float. They're longer, but they cover all the basics and every principle that you would need to know that you can apply to any situation, any guitar, any tremolo, floating tremolo, any string brand, gauge, and any tuning. Okay, so we're kind of close here. I'm gonna keep tuning, but the, uh, the tremolo has taken a fairly good dive there. Hopefully you can see that. We are gonna need to crack that open in the back here in a moment and do some adjustments because it has fallen down in the back. We're going to loosen our trim cloth screws a little bit to give that some slack so that the strings can pull it back forward. And the reason it sunk back is because we put a slightly lesser gauge on here. I mean, they're still so similar, but uh, because they were just a little bit less, there isn't quite as much tension on the strings. Therefore, the bridge falls back. And the strings keep sharpening here. So that means it's gonna to continue to fall back. They're sharpening because the bridge is pulling them back, increasing their tension. Thus, increasing pitch. So as I keep detuning this, the bridge is gonna to continue to fall. As soon as we get close, which we're getting pretty close, start to make some adjustments. Cut off all these guys here. I like to bend them down before I cut them off. That way they're kind of facing down as they get clipped. All righty. I wasn't exactly sure how to use this whammy bar. If it's just push in and pull out, it seems kind of weird. It's just super tight. Maybe it's just because it's so new, you know? But anyways, so we are gonna need to loosen our trim cloth screws a little bit. And I'm excited to take a look at what we've got going on behind the scenes here.
Okay, the moment of truth. Four springs, as I suspected, which is a big reason why the trim feels tight. You know, it's like pretty hard, but I don't mind that so much. I know uh, some guys do. And hey, while we're here, let's just see what we got going on in the electronics cavity. It's actually metal. This is nice hardware. I like this stuff here, okay. Nothing too unexpected there. Looking good. Pop this back on. All right. So now it's just a bunch of trial and error till we get this thing right. So I'm gonna start. I don't know, maybe a full turn. That was a half turn. Ooh. Turn and a half to start. Probably not gonna be enough, but we'll see. So. So now the guitar is flat, the tuning is flat like we wanted. And it's gonna pull up that bridge. Already looking better. There's a good chance we overshot it as well. So I'm gonna turn it in half, I wanna remember that. <clears throat> so I can move in small increments. That's what's important. Okay, we are super close. We are close, now we'll take a look. And it's pretty darn good. I could probably go the tiniest bit more actually. Loosening, it's not 100% but it's pretty close. Let me do one more, one of these, or tune, and we'll see. If it continues to flatten, maybe we're good. A little bit. There's a chance we're gonna be right on the money. With this float thing, it just really takes patience. Dedication and consistency. Staying consistent with what you're doing, not just thinking, okay, that's good. And then you button everything back up and realize five minutes later that it's pulled way up or it's out of tune or whatever. So just little bits at a time. I didn't mean for this to turn into a how to float your trim video, but uh, figure what the heck. Those of you that want to listen, all good. Those of you that don't, sorry. Oh, dude, it's absolutely perfect right now. I don't know how well you can see that. It, it couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> Did we get that lucky? But the thing is, like I said, I don't want to count my chickens here before they've completely hatched. So I'm going to keep, give this another guy like that. If it drops too significantly here after this, then that, and we have to keep sharpening, that's yeah, going to be pretty good. Oh, dude, we're good. Money. Dude, that went perfectly. Tighten these up. We'll get to fine tuning. I always put the back plate on totally last after I'm confident that uh, we're good. Okay. Some fine tuning. Beautiful. 
we are solid. I'm gonna pick this up to play it in a moment. We'll do one last fine tuning. But let's get this plate back on the back here. <clears throat> polish we'll plug it in something else I want to show you about it as well concerning the case it does come does come with the case so that's cool and I'll talk about that I'll show you the case okie dokie Fun. Go have me some fun. Go have me some fun. The Nomad. My latest favorite guitar tool. It's the bomb. Link in description. Almost there, guys. Excellent. Kept basically perfect tune. And the float is monetary. Let's do this. my new PB Invective cabs here. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. Out with the old, in with the new. That's what that one's called. All right. Here we go. Remember I said we'd tune it once it's in this position, but uh, hey. Kind of play with this table in front of me. First go around, it felt good, played well, 
and I'm excited to play with it some more. After I clear out this junk and get a little more comfortable here, I can actually jam into it a little bit. But like I said, actually after this, I'm going to shoot a video of a song that I wrote specifically on this guitar. Well, I'm about to, and then I'm gonna film that, but you're gonna see that first, you may have, and if you haven't, make sure you check that out. But let's take a quick look at the case. <clears throat> because it's a, a bit of an interesting one. Pretty nice here. They call this foam core because it's not hard shell, but it's still hard, it's durable. It has like foam in it, I think. And uh, so it's super light. Um, you know, so probably durable enough for light gigging and stuff. I don't know that it'd make it in and out of a trailer every single night, night after night on a big tour or whatever, or maybe it'd be fine. I don't know. It's my first one of this type and uh, be cool to check it out, but it does ship with this case. So that's cool. And uh, right now the price on these guitars, it's just under 2000 bucks for the uh, Jackson American Virtuoso. And uh, there'll be a Sweetwater link for you you can get the guitar or some sort of link in the description if you'd like to learn more about it and check it out and pick one up for yourself. Any purchase you make via Sweetwater through my links helps me and the channel at no additional cost or obligation of any type for you. So yeah, hope you dug the Virtuoso like I did, Virtuoso. And um, yeah, be looking forward to playing this thing more in the future. And I uh, appreciate everybody watching. If you made it this far, thanks for hanging out. Give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of my channel for all, all sorts of cool stuff. Those maintenance tutorials I mentioned, I got a boatload on them. Everything from Evertunes, Floyd, Intonation, Truss Rod, all that kind of stuff. Plus a load of other cool stuff here on the channel. So please explore around. Whether you're new or old, everybody new, welcome. Everybody that's been on the ride for a while, appreciate you big time. Rob Arnold signing off. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.